Bob Catter and his father, Bob Catter Sr., between them have held the huge federal electorate of Kennedy in far north Queensland for 51 of the past 54 years. Catter Sr. was Army Minister in the McMahon Coalition Government and Catter Jr. a Minister in the Bialka Peterson Government in Queensland, going federal for the Nationals in 93, then splitting to become an independent nine years ago. Catter Jr. is now a fixture in a seat that stretches from Mount Isa north to the Gulf and east to Innisvale. And right now in his deliberations, along with two other rural independents to decide who they'll back into minority government, his ambition is a lofty one, securing the future of rural Australia. John Taylor spent several days in the electorate for this report. He's the man in the big hat. Good to see you. Not afraid to walk and talk his own distinct way. You know, if I were good for the bush, I'm a Martian astronaut. That big fat tub of lard, Mr Barton, in there, thinks he's going to get away with this, then, then he is in for a very rough ride. The people that are attacking me you know, are people that love to rubbish people who they call uh, buff heads or... Uh, or rednecks, or, you know, uh, bushwhackers. In the electorate of Kennedy, they like what they see. Bob Catter first won the seat 17 years ago, and in the last two elections has polled about 70% of the two-party preferred vote. Right. Bob's on the job, all day and all night. I have voted Bob Catter for three or four times now, for Bob, and... Uh, I reckon he's the only one that has got anything that's a bit of a backbone in him. He's certainly a big persona. He's certainly a colourful character. But I don't think he's mad. To understand Catter Country is to know that the electorate of Kennedy is big. It's a sprawling seat from the Northern Territory border to the Queensland coast, two and a half times the size of Victoria and almost a third of Queensland itself. It's a large electorate and it uh, has a great variance. It, it, it's got a large Labor vote out in Mount Isa, as you would expect with the mines, uh, through a lot of cattle country and uh, agricultural land, right through here with the sugar and bananas. Within one seat, Kennedy captures much of the economic diversity of rural and regional Australia. It helps to explain why for Bob Catter, Kennedy's issues are synonymous with those of rural Australia. I would give the gong to that person that allowed us to survive in rural Australia. He built uh, processing plants for mining. Bob Catter is a career politician who followed in his father's footsteps. Bob Catter Sr. was a Labor Party member before switching to the country party and held the seat of Kennedy for 34 years. Bob Catter Jr. was first a Queensland State National Party MP beginning in 1974 before entering federal politics in 1993. The Sun also ended up changing allegiances. In 2001, Bob Catter Jr. quit the Nationals, citing irreconcilable differences. I can't go before these people and say, vote for me when a vote for me will be a vote to continue what they've copped for the last 17 years. The National Party... His animosity to the Nationals, coupled with the fact four of the six state seats encompassed by Kennedy are held by Labor MPs, means he doesn't fit easily with either major party. The only people I've heard, in fact, have said if Bob goes with Labor... We'll skin him. Oh, tough question. I wouldn't like to speculate on that. I would suggest that the people of Kennedy would like to see Bob negotiate with whomever, whichever party, the best deal for the bush. I'd like to try one of our bananas. Bert Skipadori is a third generation farmer and long time Bob Catter supporter. He, like Bob Catter, believes rural Australia is in a death struggle. His stall is a way of cutting out the middleman to boost his income. In this stall that I've got out on the side of the road now, I've talked to hundreds of people from all over Australia that were rural people, and they all tell me the same thing. They couldn't survive, they had to get out. And they couldn't, they've been three, four, five generations, they couldn't survive, they had to get out. All he wants to do is be able to pay the bills and pass the farm onto his family. A fairer, fairer deal, like, um, so that that our products keep in keep going up with the wages and the rest of the you know the money in the country. The bush is struggling. We have issues of uh, population decline. 
We have ageing population issues, which I know is uh, right across Australia, but what, where it's most predominantly observed here is that um, if we don't have any youth, if we don't have any young people, if we can't retain them, then our economy suffers badly. We've got this alternator come in that's got to go out. Mary Brown runs an aviation services company in Ingham and also heads the local Chamber of Commerce. She sees the current political impasse as an opportunity. I think many people in the city of Kennedy and the rural region overall are absolutely ecstatic at the current situation where finally North Queensland and the bush uh, have a voice that can really be heard. Mary Brown appreciates Australia's vastness and it feeds into her support for some sort of strong broadband network taking in the bush so that she can reliably connect to the internet at her home 30 kilometres from town. Uh, give you a demonstration this morning I was trying to do some online banking and, and get some online information. No broadband because we've got cloud cover. So um, my business effectively stops. We've got a, a government, maybe a government, which has got a very thin ma uh, majority and therefore those people can be diligent enough to deliver us real good government right across from coast to coast. Ben Colcott is a cattleman and is also the mayor of the gold and cattle town Charters Towers. He too believes this is now an opportunity for Bob Catter to deliver and to help build a better Australia. January 2008, there were five Sydney harbours a day flowing, flowing out of the mouth of the Burdekin River. The Burdekin Dam, as it stands, is four Sydney harbours. With the second stage of the Burdekin Dam, it's got the ability to be 16 said harbours. And then this, this district will be enriched considerably. We do about 30,000 trays. And... Joe Morrow is a Mareeba mango farmer. He's also one of Bob Catter's political confidants. Bob has the, the, the key voice and, the key, uh, and a key vote that at the end of the day um, it will be the test of whether or not uh, something can be delivered. For Joe Morrow, Bob Catter is the man come the hour for Kennedy and rural Australia. A counter to the rural free market approach of Labor and the Coalition. And that's where the difference is basically between what Bob represents and where the National Party represents is that Bob believes, and a lot of, and most of the people that support him, that there should be some form of regulation to make sure that the, the market system does work properly. Just leaving it to the free market seems to erode the process. From big corporations that are making massive profits over our broken banks. A few insights to one of the electorates uh, that may decide the outcome of the next government. That report from John Taylor.